We're off. You gotta, you gotta come out at the right level. I just learned this song. He just heard the song. He just heard the song. Tequila. Okay, we'll start over. You just do the whole thing, and I'll just say tequila. I forget how it goes. I love it. Tequila! Yeah! If it wasn't Sanko de Mayo, that would be it. I love it, man. I love it. Sanko de Mayo, too, huh? I feel like jumping in a lowrider right now. No, we are not. Carlito! Manny! We're back to a table of four now. We haven't had a yeah. table of four in a while. The round table, my friend. So we got we got two very special guests. We've got, uh, on my right, I've got Christian. On my left, I've got Dustin. And you guys are from... You tell it, because I don't want to mess it up. We are from <laughs> KS Company Corp. Corp. <laughs> so that's Corp. at KS Company Corp. It's KS, KS is what it is, right? KS, yep. KS is the company, and, and Carlito and uh, Triple W KS and the word and co. Correct. Dot CA. What are we going to be talking about today, Carlito? Oh, this is, should be interesting. I think you should bring us in on this one. Why should I do it? Because you love this. We are going to talk about millennials oh in construction. <laughs> so this is going to be considered millennials part two. I'm sure in about a year we'll be at part 15 or something. We'll see it how it goes. But I'm going to preempt this podcast by saying we are not going to shit on millennials. Okay, <laughs> we are not going to just talk negatively. For anything that's negatively said, we're going to have something positive to say about it. Wow. Man. So the that- idea of this podcast today is to come up with faults because I've been told there's a few faults when it comes to millennials and construction, <laughs> oh. <laughs> but we are going to work at coming up with some solutions. So we've got a couple of elder millennials, right? How old are you, Christian? 27. Yeah, you're fucking elder millennial. And Dustin, how old are you? I'm 29. 20? Oh, you're on the cusp, man. Yeah. Okay, yep. so that brings me to our first segment. Well, that would be history with Manny. <laughs> I've got something interesting. Since we're talking about millennials, I figure, do you guys know what the five generations in the last hundred years have been? Wow. I want to go right back, right? Oh, so we're going to go way, way back. The turn of the 19th century? It would have been, uh, no, 20th century, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> I almost asked, what century are we in now? Hang on a sec. <laughs> Born before 1945, you're considered a silent generation. Never heard that before yet. That's new one to me today. So after that is what we're familiar with, which are baby boomers. Yep. Baby boomers are 1946 to 1964. Hmm. Then you have Gen X, which is Carlito and I. We are Gen Xers. So we were born between 65 and 76. Funny enough, we're right smack in the middle. Then you have you guys, the millennials <laughs> or Gen Y. And they, you, guys, <laughs> you guys were hatched around 1977 to 1995. And then we have the new one, which I still can't get over. Generation Z. Z. Oh, man. Gen Z, Gen Z, I, Gen, Centennials. They were born after 1996. I think that's the one I'm worried about. Hang yeah. on a sec. I am not done. <laughs> I am not done with history. I want you guys to tell me some characteristic traits from each of these generations. Oh, interesting. Okay, so Silent Generation, which is the very first one, I just want to let you guys know, they were hardworking, a strong work ethic. They, it was uh, instilled in them by their parents. They worked in factories. They were all about the Industrial Revolution. They considered their work a privilege. You guys just bat out if you guys disagree with this shit. No, I agree. No, they were starving. This, this is, oh, yeah. That yeah, would exactly. have been our grandparents' generation, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. This is your grandparents, Immigrants right? Immigrants came from Greece, very resourceful. So they had no problem with long, grueling hours in their prime. They enjoyed it. It was basically, that's what they looked forward to. That was the work. Baby boomers now. So baby boomers are a huge part of the population on either Canada or in the U.S. It's a, it's a huge portion of the population, right? 
these were World War II babies, right? So they started infusing a lot of money into the industry, but they started saving. They were really conscious about their independence, responsibility, and maturity. They equipped themselves with their own minds. They want to do new things, new ideas. Then you have Gen X us. Gen X guys were a group that started to introduce ideas of solid work-life balance. That's what we started talking about. And so we were looking at the silent generation and the boomers, and we were paying attention to the good things that they were doing. And we were using them, some of it, and working with it, modifying it. We are considered the MTV generation. Really? Okay. You guys know what MTV is, right? I've, I've heard <laughs> of it once. <laughs> they grew up on that. I used to watch it all the time. <laughs> uh, millennials or Gen Ys. So this generation is extremely comfortable with mobile devices. 32% will still use a computer for purchases. They typically have multiple social media accounts. Millennials have less brand loyalty than previous generations. Nurtured and pampered by their parents. Wow. Who didn't want to make the mistakes of the previous generation. Millennials are confident ambitious and achievement oriented they also have high expectations of their employers tend to seek new challenges at any given time and aren't afraid to question authority is that about right uh well i was not pampered i can tell you <laughs> yeah i was i was raised with a backhand so i don't know about that <laughs> Then we get into Generation Z. And so what they've got so far for these guys is their interest okay so characteristics are specific they're avid gamers they're music goers, and they're known for being ever-present messaging on the internet, social, and mobile devices. They are truly the digitites or the digital tights. They tend to care about trends, but are quick to research anything and everything. Wow, that doesn't leave much room for learning the hard way. Learning the hard way, right? Yeah. So that, that's got to be the longest history. <laughs> I, you know what, though? I want to still hear what they wanted to say about all those levels. What you, you guys, kinda, you what kinda, you guys, well, I want to, I'm curious. So you guys are we're the having a history it. lesson at the same time. So yeah. It's I, I love the debate now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so now we are going to talk about a certain segment, which are you guys, and which is, I, I have a funny feeling getting into the Gen Ys as well too, right? Or sorry, the Gen Zs. Gen Zs are the new guys. The new guys from new 1996 the that they were born, right? So the Gen Zs. And I think that the Gen Zs are even going to be more tech savvy and tech oriented than you guys. Yeah, but I don't know if that's going to be a good thing because they're kind of involved. Oh, I'm in the not wrong saying it's tech. a good thing. No, I don't think it's a good thing at all. So, how do we want to start this conversation? Like the last time we had two young guys here, we were talking, and they were talking. Well, about they're the not really things. that young, Manny. Compared to you guys, I don't know. <laughs> we could be their parents, is all I'm saying, right? That's true. That yeah. so, I, I if I could be anybody's parent, I consider them young. That's how it works in my eyes. <laughs> You tell us what are wrong, what's wrong with millennials today in construction. What's wrong with them? Honestly, I try not to hang out with them because they're, well, not all of them, because there's a select few I know, and they're really good workers, and they've kind of learned from the older guys' mistakes, which me and Dustin have as well. But I'm saying, like, there's guys that just complain. They don't want to work. They don't want to work more than 40 hours a week. It's not even about working. It's about working hard. They want to go to work just for, like, it seems a lot of them, like, for a quick buck and not just, like, put in a full hard day's work and want to learn and grow. It's hard to actually, I've seen it a lot with people I've worked with. It's hard to teach them how to work like efficiently. They just kind of have their own way set and they're like, this is how I'm going to do it. And that's, that's how it's getting done. Is that how it was for you, Carlito, when you were younger? Not at all, man. I mean, there was lots of opportunity, but you had to prove yourself to people. I started at 13 working full time. So did I. After school, I would just go to work. I actually worked for Stanley Garage Doors. They allowed me to work until late at night. And then I told you I went to Mr. Christie's Nabisco from 11 o'clock until 7 in the morning. So I'm a different generation of, of workers, By the way, man. do not eat chewy cookies, guys. <laughs> do not eat cook chewy cookies. What's, that's all what's I'm the beef saying. with the cookies? Well, that's going to stay in-house. <laughs> <laughs> I am just saying. It's a conversation for the mic. There, <laughs> there's a certain something that's put on the cookies that you don't want to well, be on the cookies let's to make them this, chewy. Let's that's put it I'm this saying. way. It's just personal <laughs> opinion. But if a cookie, Ever since he told me about a it, cookie I don't stays eat the cookies soft. anymore. <laughs> for a couple months there's got to be a problem <laughs> okay so there's a secret ingredient we won't talk about <laughs> if anything stays soft for a couple of months there's a problem okay <laughs> call your doctor yeah. <laughs> all right so how long have you guys been in construction so for me i started off in 2012 and it wasn't really construction it would have been more landscaping fresh out of high school trying to you know test the entrepreneur spirit so i started off doing that cutting grass doing mulch 
And then eventually it worked its way indoors where people would ask me to do a couple things around the house. And then it was until maybe three or four years ago, I really jumped into it. Like that's when I started my Instagram account. I found you and I kind of developed that passion for the industry. And Dustin? Uh, my story is a little more complex. I started, I kind of had a different, I didn't really grow up with the millennials working with them. My father, I worked with him. He owned his own company. So I started when I was like four doing construction. What was he doing? Right. Renovations, like windows, doors, siding, all that kind of stuff. He kind of had the hard ass approach. He fired me like four or five times. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So I learned, hard, I learned hard how to do things right and wrong. And just because he was my dad doesn't mean I got the special treatment. Like I had to sweep like everybody else. I had to do the hard labor. So kind of got out of that, got into automotive for a little bit went to school for welding kind of got tired of being dirty every day so i went to school <laughs> for architecture for three years and i worked architecture for about three and a half four years kind of missed building stuff so i got back into construction probably about 2016 you're truly a millennial man you're just bouncing around oh yeah from <laughs> place to place but at least you got you got quite a bit of experience man so the resume starts to grow yeah at I that could point build you a deck and fix your car if you want. <laughs> that's that's brilliant <laughs> simultaneously same time <laughs> uh, and get the permit right? exactly yeah. Yeah. well at least when you're bringing materials and tools to a site and your car breaks down you could fix it and still get the job and that's been done that's been done i fixed a drive shaft on the side of a highway once, wow so. <laughs> but neither one of you guys decided to go to school for construction no, uh, nope. I mean, I think now I'm, I'm thinking of going back just because eventually we're kind of thinking of getting into custom homes. So Terry and build licensing, all that stuff. I just want to learn it. That's client requested. That's not law. No, it's not. But it's knowledge is power. Trust it's me, the older more. you get, the more familiar you get with law. My first year of school, I did uh, a construction course. So I did like building and all that stuff. I obviously I had the knowledge of it going in. But after that, it was like building codes and all that kind of stuff, building, structural. I'm pretty happy with where I am for going forward. For the knowledge to get moving yeah, forward, right? there's still so much more to learn and it never stops. So Chris, why do you think that you need school? And I'm not dogging school, but why do you think that you need school to get to custom renovations? I don't because I've made it this far without having that. But at the same time, it's like, it's just better to maybe have that paperwork. Like, I don't know. What do you think? You think it's a necessity to have a never had a anybody ask degree, me. university degree never, for that? Never. Even in my film days, nobody ever asked me to see any of my paperwork. The That's work I mean. spoke like, for you, not the paperwork. I learned it a long time ago never to give anyone any advice on where they want to go or don't want to go. I've told people to stay on jobs that they should have left early. And I really believe that if it's something passionate and you want to go to school, you can better yourself because you will learn something. But the best part about it is you'll learn or you'll meet people along the way that in, a, in its own is. I'm not giving advice. I'm just saying that I, I don't, it does and it doesn't work. I think most kids nowadays don't go to school or don't want to go to school. They think that they, but that's, I think that's a trait where all you guys are ready to jump too quickly into whatever you want to do. Okay, so let me rephrase. There's still a ton of stuff I don't know that I want to know. So I'm just deciding if either a college course or even a night course would be the better route or if even just picking up a code book and touching up on that, right? On-site learning is so much different than in-class learning. I feel like in-class is still behind. So what's more valuable? I think on-site, putting your hands on it. I'd agree. Yeah, but 100%. Going There's forward, you know, the, the amount of people that I saw when I was in school, it, second year, and the teacher said, who knows how to read a tape measure? And like three people put up their hand. It blew my mind. Hang on a wow. second. First of all, I got two questions for that, man. One is, why do you have to ask that question? Uh, no idea. Uh, maybe it's just a curiosity from the teacher. I don't know. Do you know how many eights are in an inch? <laughs> Yeah, well, and a lot of people so don't know that. Stab no, at it. and you're right. Are I, you kidding I me? I do know a lot of older guys that still don't know how to read a tape measure. Listen, the challenge is when you start dealing with Irish men on a job site, and they're speaking metric, and you're speaking imperial. Hey, school, everything was metric. It has to be, because that's how we're taught. But the thing is, uh, you guys know that North America is the only continent that still does imperial. The rest of the world is metric. Yeah. When it comes to construction, that North America, Canada, and the U.S. are the only two countries that do inches. 
Well, Everybody else around not the world. unless you're in the union. If you're building forms or you're building high rise buildings or you're dealing with engineers or architects, you're going to be dealing with millimeters and metric, right? So what do you mean? You'll be doing that kind of math. Instead no, no, of no. Inches. On site though, on site, you're doing forming and stuff like that. You're still doing it in, in Imperial. No, you're still, you're in doing metric, it in metric. Yeah. So guys will have two tapes, right? The guys will have the basic tape that everyone's used to, which is inches. So they'll bring that out to cut basic wood. But when it comes down to detail, that's when they'll, they'll I have yet to see a framer who has a metric tape. I have, I have, one, one, my, I have one in my truck right now, too. I have one that has both on either side, and he refuses to use it. Well, yeah, I because I, I don't want to. I, I like have the ones one. that have the cheater on it, quarter no, inch. You will benefit yourself if you actually do go down the road of knowing both. It's important. Yeah, it really is. It is important. And, I, and just for like all drawings come in in both, right? Yeah. You know, well, actually, it depends on a, the a, city. A lot of them, you have to order them in. Yeah, correct. In Imperial. That's right. Yeah. 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 It depends on the architect, whoever drew it out, draftsperson, person, correct. whatever yeah. it is. They may have done both, right? Okay. So how do we get into Imperial metric land? Well, we're talking about school. School. And we oh, had a yeah. question but about a teacher measure. asking about who knows how to read a tape measure. Yeah. You want a challenging course in school, teach them how to read a, a bricklayer's tape measure. That's so a is, unique is tape that measure. The, is that the fold out one? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> yeah, I saw that on Instagram. They were no. selling it. It tells you the shape. That's shape. the fingers in the arm. No, no, no. Stop this in the. Okay, you, got, you don't know what a bricklayer is. We're having fun. We're having some fun, man. You're upsetting you're, all the Portuguese you're and taking Italians. This very oh. serious. <laughs> it has all the space so you can actually figure out all your joints. So then as you're climbing the wall, as you're growing on your mortar bed, you can actually change it if you want. Go from a 3 8 bed to a, a half inch bed or whatever. On the measuring tape, it has that. So as you're going, you do it gradually instead of do it dramatically, and then you can't really tell that the yeah, joints you, are a little thicker, it out thinner, over, exactly. Over the right? wall. So a bricklayer's tape measure that is should be good. perfect for tile setters, and I haven't seen them one yet. So why would you need it for a tile? Well, setter? because you're putting in spaces, and you you know eighth, sixteenth, quarter inch. Some guys do quarter inch. I don't. Quarter. Inch. That's really half old half school. Well, that's, that's nice to get a nice half inch grout. That's like that's where, like when you when you leave the country and you're going to Mexico, or you're going to Here Cuba. Go. I'm just we have a we have a list of groups that we're going to offend on this show. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't start it. We're, we're, we're millennials. Apparently, we're offending everybody. Yeah, we're offended. Okay, so, so so I think I think what's really important is you should try to figure out if you need school while you still have the time. You don't have any bills built up. Uh, you're still young enough that it's not going to affect you and, and you, know, could, you still have time to kind of grow. For the guys that figure out they need school later on, I would never say no to school as long as you can fit it into your life. Like if you're single, your bills aren't high, then you should go to school and better yourself. I, I don't, Manny and me have our opinions on Listen, it. Man, I, met, I went to school for something. It, it cost. I learned. All I would say is that if you're going to learn and take something from it and it's going to make you grow, then great. But if you go and you don't learn anything and you spend so much money at it and you don't grow, then there's no benefit in it. I, I think what I've learned from the guys that, because I've had people given to me or, or youngsters given to me from school, you know, they were, had the, a practical, but they didn't have the experience in, in construction. So when they came out of school, they spent three or four years in school, you know, having fun and learning things. But when they came into the real world, they weren't ready to, to hustle and work. And that's why I have a problem with schooling because when you get out of school, you just don't have that, that push and that drive to like make money. You know, you start at seven o'clock in the morning. You got to hustle, man. There's no time for media. There's no time for, for breaks. You got to make your money and go home and, and party, right? What's the driving force for millennials these days? I, I don't know. For me, it's different. I have a mortgage. I have bills that have to get paid. So I don't really, I don't feel I fall with that category. I mean, a, a few guys I still know are living at home, so they don't really have the real real world pressures yet. I wouldn't say I have a driving force to get out there and work and make money. It's just, it's always my mentality. It's how I was brought up. Working for my dad, it's I saw the bills that were needed to be paid. I saw where the money was going. It wasn't just working for someone getting a paycheck. I was working for him to get the job done, not just for me to get paid, but so he could pay like the bills and stuff for me to do things as well. Do you guys know where every single dollar, how much money you guys have coming in and how much money you guys have going out? Do you guys know exactly to the dollar? I think I'm within a couple hundred bucks per month. I have some like spend money, but everything else is like... Bills. But you know where bills. all the dollars. So you do a job, you got money coming in, all that money comes in. You know exactly what bills are paid. You know exactly what goes into savings and, and you go whatever, right? Accounting, taxes. It, it, it took a couple of years to figure that out. I don't think a lot of millennials do. No? I think that the, it, I think that's an endless tree. 
I think that the money comes in, they think, okay, this is great. I've got enough for this week. I'm good. I can survive. I'm, next paycheck is next week. Yeah. Is that fair yeah. to say? I think yeah, so. Yeah, I think so. I struggled with that a lot too growing up, but it's just get money, spend it. And <laughs> even until today, I have a hard time with it sometimes. Yeah, or you do a large job and you think it's a huge payday and hey, let's buy all these new tools. That's hey, the other thing. You know what? Yeah. I kind of like your attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Here's no, the thing. you don't so do I'm, that. I'm Greek. I'm frugal. That's the thing. I was brought up that way, right? So like every dime you make today, you got to think about where it's going for tomorrow. Yeah. And, and That's especially important. at a time like this, right? Like where work's not, you're not getting work. You can't work. What's your background? Dustin? I know my grandma's Slovakian and my mom's side of the family is American. So. so you're a European. So don't hate me. <laughs> <laughs> I love Americans. <laughs> I don't have a problem with anybody, man. And I love Slovaks. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I know a handful of millennials that are hard workers. They do a great job. They're passionate. But I also know that there's a stereotype. But I've met my guys like Omid and, and Flo. And there's Mike from DGR. Like there's a few guys that I know that are hard, hard workers. Most of that I find if you're an immigrant or if you came from a hardworking family, you're a passionate millennial and you work hard. If you've been given everything, you're not a hardworking millennial. No, but I, I don't think they're going to survive in this industry, to be honest, because it's in construction too, in it's, general, in construction, it's just too demanding, especially if you're going to run a business, it's not just going to work and going home. It's there's so much shit off the site. You have to do, you got to do all the paperwork. You got to go out and get jobs. You got to be confident meeting clients. On, on, it's time not of the a nine to five job. No, it's, it's, sure. it's a 6 a.m. to finish kind of thing. It's seven days a week, eight days a week. The millennial generation and what's the Gen Z? Z, Z yeah. The one ahead Z. of us or behind us, whatever. Gen Z. Yeah. Gen Z. And, and they got to understand that. it's They're trying to see what you guys have done and trying to do that in a condensed amount of time. And it's not going to work that way. Isn't that really interesting? Because transitional or whatever, silent generation and then the boomers and then us, we never considered to want to do something better than the previous generation. We were trying to take what we learned from the previous generation and use it for our own purposes and build something on top of that. When you finally got to millennials or Gen Z right now, Z, whatever you want to be, I think there's more selfishness. Is that right to say? Yeah, selfishness, competition. It's like a lot of people are trying to reinvent the wheel. A lot of egos too. You know what? I'm guilty of all of the above too at <laughs> times. And I got to like check myself once in a while to bring myself back down to that level of being humble. I don't know if it's fair to say it's just millennials because I've met older guys too. Oh, that they're assholes too. That's I what I mean. Yeah. It's just, they're you maybe just, a bit you more You see entitled. more millennials. That's yeah. for all right, sure. Let me ask you guys this though. You're on a job site, you're the GC and you got every trade coming on the job site. And which trade do you not want the millennial on? And which trade do you want the millennial on? Like the complaining uh, millennial or the hardworking you know, millennial like us. That's good. That's, that's I, good. That's a good question. He got you, Manny. So, I, I, I so definitely tell, don't want tell me where you put the complaining one and tell me where you put the hardworking one. The complaining one is on coffee runs, so I don't have to hear him. <laughs> <laughs> and the hardworking one can do anything, really. Pick up a broom. I think he was talking more like if an engineer comes on or a homeowner, you don't want to have the bad millennial there. And you can have the millennial that is representing your company. When I'm well. not on site. I'd say one. the bad one you wouldn't want, like doing carpentry and stuff. Like you're even rough framing. Why not? Me personally, I've had it where I've had millennial come in. He was a little younger than I was and he didn't want to listen to me. You would make a suggestion and he just did not want yeah, to. Yeah, even it was the same way he was doing it. It was just a little bit faster. It was like, here, this is set it up this way. Do it faster this way. And he's like, nope. I'm doing it this way. This is why I was shown how to do it, and I'm stuck doing it this <laughs> that way. That guy needs to get fired right away. <laughs> yeah. How would you react, Carlito, if you heard him say, uh, no, I'm doing it this way? Bye -bye. I, I've gone through a lot of guys, Manny, so yeah, they're I've, gone. The, the hint is, is, hey, do you have any friends that want a job? And they say, <laughs> yeah. And I say, can I have that phone number? And the minute, the minute they give me that phone number, I say, get the fuck out of here. And that's it. It's done. But then he asks, can you give me a ride home? Yeah. No. <laughs> I left my bike at no, home. But I, but I do want to share something. Like, so I'm, I'm 48 right now. And the guys, the guys I grew up with, some of them were very brilliant. They came out of Greek homes and so on, European homes. And their parents gave them something that was really important. They said, okay, you know, I want you to save up $20,000. You're going to give me all your money until, you know, you get $20,000. Then you're going to buy a house. You're going to live at home and you're going to rent that house out. My buddies now are living in the homes that were paid off by other people. And those are million dollar homes. So like, yep. it's a different attitude, right? Like my parents were poor. So if I wanted clothes or a car, I had to go out and work. I had to go out and save. 
And then I got stuck. I got the addiction of working and making money all the and time. And that, that's kind of the same way I was too. Like I played hockey growing up and I was a goalie. And my parents said, if you need the equipment, we will get it for you. But if you want it, you have to buy it. So if I wanted new pads, new helmet, or whatever, I had to go save money and buy it. And I could tell you, there was a couple seasons where I hated the stuff I was wearing. But I knew it's what my family, my parents could afford. And the next season, I had new pads because I worked all season with my dad and saved up and bought it myself. Why are you guys in construction? Because we've spoken to so many guys, and I think the last guy that we spoke to, which is, he's very well respected, Jim Carrick, he's been in the business 50 years, and he told us a number of times, there's a lot of money to be made in this business. Yeah, a lot of money. So do you guys think that millennials in general think that there isn't a lot of money? Do you think that they think that that app out there, they can make a lot more money doing that, or they can make more money being a lawyer, being a real estate agent, whatever? Like, why are you guys in this business? I'm good oh, at it. Yeah. That's usually the first thing. <laughs> humble. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really a good start. <laughs> a little humble. No, no, no one else wants me to work for them. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a bad employee. I'm a good employer. <laughs> you're a bad employee. You're a good employer? Yeah. <laughs> Is that the millennial men like mentality? Maybe. I think I just shot myself <laughs> it's a good in the foot angle. There. No, it's an actual good angle. They're bad employees, but they're great employers. Yes and no. I think they look at the work and they're like, that's hard work. I could just sit at home and make that app and make money. Yeah. Or they don't want to go out and get dirty. Like They're inside all the time on their computers, playing games and stuff. I yeah. grew up outside like every day. Like, yeah. My parents would <laughs> kick me outside. Like, Go do something outside. Okay, but isn't it kind of funny? Listen, I still scratch my head when I see certain things online where there's kids that are 12, 13 years old making millions of dollars playing video games. Or reviewing yeah. box toys on YouTube. Exactly. Yeah. There's those kinds of... So why, why swing a hammer? Because not everyone's going to make millions of dollars playing video games. Yeah, yeah. I'm just not passionate about you know tech. I don't like that. I don't understand it. I understand. But you're building. in construction, though, and construction is becoming tech heavy. But here's the thing: I'm not that's, making apps. I'm, not, I'm not trying to learn. Co- and I'm partner <laughs> with the smart guy. Yeah, I'm the tech guy. <laughs> we have our strengths. He swings that's the not hammer. I play the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good team, though. That's it a really good team. is. So that's a nice balance. It works that way. Exactly. Though. That's me and Manny. <laughs> no. <laughs> Who swings the hammer? No. Well, no. I always swing the hammer. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. I'm just trying to figure out what is the actual issue. I haven't really come across the bad millennials because, like you said, there's only been one guy that showed up on my job site where he told me he was a certain trade. He told me he had a certain skill set. I did a walkthrough, had a scope of work. I left him for the whole day. By the end of the day, he did hardly anything. He was more focused on building a jig or getting things ready or doing things wrong or doing things half-assed. And I said, that's not the quality I'm looking for. You're gone. Bye. And that was it. The done. I was like, I gave him the day still. And I still paid the day. That was a shit thing as an employer. You still pay. Well, you have to, right? Well, let's start with the simple things. So you hire a guy. Does he show up to work for the first day? Yes. No. Half the time? Well, I'm no. talking about my situation. Yeah, okay, but what right. I'm saying is now people don't show up. They get a job opportunity. They don't. Two, they show up. When do they show up? Late. Like 10, 11. Why not 10 minutes early than 10 minutes late? What's oh, the I reason like why they show up late? The most recent one, and they avocado didn't work. toast. <laughs> avocado toast burnt. <laughs> yeah. No. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> what? The millennials. Wow. The They're stuck in line toast. at Starbucks. <laughs> Don't knock Starbucks. I like it. <laughs> Hang on a sec. Wait, he, no, he the got, real reason he got, he got caught in toast. What? It was a joke. It was burnt toast. <laughs> <laughs> avocado avocado toast. Avocado toast. It's a millennial. Thing. You can't say burnt toast because Carlito and I grew up on these these yeah, historical you're videos a stroke. <laughs> where she's having a stroke and they're doing brain surgery and she smells toast. She smells toast. So right. you can't say toast. toast. <laughs> <laughs> my left arm's going numb. I smell burnt toast. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but that is the truth. I'm always, no matter what, my customers always call me on my phone. They go, "Hey, you can." come in and i'm like well it's not time you told me you wanted me to start at eight they're like i know but you're sitting in your car and i'm like well i'm giving your privacy until eight i'll be in at eight they're like but you've been out there for an hour okay this joker showed up at 10 11 11 or 10 10 10 30 11 i think about the same person no okay so not even not even with us a guy i worked with would show up late his first week three days late 11 o'clock we start at 7 30 how do you like he goes i have kids and i'm like you have a wife I don't care about your kids. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't I don't care, care about, about your, your kids family. Either. I don't care. It I'm wasn't sorry. even my company and I was getting bothered. 
That's what I mean. Like, but I the thing is that guy. if you agree to show up on the job site for 730 and then on the day that you're supposed to be there and you show up at 11 or 1030, whatever it is, and your excuse is I have kids. It's just disrespectful. Then give them up for adoption. So wait a second. <laughs> like, what's wrong so, with you, man? So when the landlord, you can't do that. So when the landlord <laughs> comes for his money... I have kids. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to use that as an excuse? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> yeah. See you later. Yeah. No, I was always early. Like, even for the last employer that we worked for, I would go to Brantford. He wanted me to start at 8.30, and I was there at, like, quarter after 7, sitting out front just waiting for the time. I was always up early, beat traffic, get there. So, eventually, the same thing. He saw me sitting outside, and he was like, you can come in and start earlier. And I actually got in trouble from our last employer for starting early. Okay, so why is there a certain percentage of you guys like that, that you're hardworking, and then there's a certain percentage that's not? And what is a percentage? Are we talking like less than 10% of millennials are hardworking and 90% are not? Or no, what? You guys no. give me a parameter it's here. Probably 50, 50. It's, it's a 50, it's, 50, really? No, I don't know. It's hard to say because my friend group, they're all hard workers. They're all trade guys, though, but they're all hard workers. Okay, so there's a question. Your circle of friends, how many guys are in construction? I'd say five out of the seven. That's a big chunk of guys. Yeah. But and I, yours? I surround myself with them. Um, well, most of my friends are design or architecture. There's, I think, two out of, I don't know, probably about five or six that are in construction now. That Your entire circle is construction? No, not at all. Most What's, of my friends are military cops, you know, like a total You're, you're the only construction? I didn't have a normal bring up. I, I was brought up with 70 guys. This is not guys, therapy. Get to so, the question. Yeah, <laughs> the no, 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 not the, my new acquaintances are all in construction. I'm the only one in mine. Wow. Right. Everybody else is IT consulting, web development, accounting, lawyer. Uh, and then liar, me. you mean liar, lawyer. <laughs> and then, and then me, right. So, and, and then I'm in construction. So I'm just, I'm trying to gauge it. So you, you circle, so you guys surrounded yourself by a big chunk of people that are in the industry already. Oh, you know, my sub trades are my friends, right? So. Well, they become your friends if they're good. Well, I went to high school with two of them. That's a thing. So <laughs> are you we, kissing the microphone? <laughs> it's it's <getting> my <laughs> microphone. There's a lot of kissing going there. on this podcast. <laughs> I've lost my train of thought here. No, what I was no, no. Is, about that. So I'm just trying to figure out the circle. I'm trying to figure out, okay, where's the work ethic? Because trust me, I've looked at my friends who have these other occupations. Would I say they're hungry? Would I say they're passionate? I think I'm the hardest working one that's making the least amount. That could be true. That's what I think. Or it is. maybe they just perceive they make more money. No, no, you true. Never know, fair right? enough. Fair enough. You're always keeping up with the Joneses, so I don't know exactly. I don't dive deep into their well, financial situation. It's funny you say that because I know some youngsters in, that I've age doesn't. You know, I don't see the age when we're making a connection and friendship, or you know, just you know having the same things in common. A lot of these guys are. They look like they're doing very well, but they've been taken care of by their parents. So as I get to know them as a, a real individual, not just a tradesman, I find that their business isn't as profitable or they're not doing as well as everyone seems to think they are on Instagram or so on. In reality, they still have something to lean back on. So yeah. for the guys that are fighting, this is my bread and butter. This is my life. So I don't want people screwing this up. I really want people to take me serious and not waste my time. It's everything to me. So a lot of guys coming in this industry just because their parents are rich and taking care of them, I don't feel that they fit in always in this industry, right? I could not agree more. That brings us to our oh, next... Oh, this is good. <laughs> Building talk with Manny. This is my favorite one. <laughs> this is your favorite one? I'm trying to figure out. I actually just jotted down a bunch of them. I'm trying to figure out what is the... Um... It's a millennial favorite. No, no, no. I actually wanted to ask you two guys, since you brought it up in the very beginning, it's really ironic that you brought it up in the beginning that you want to go back to school to learn more. What exactly is the purpose of a building permit? Wait, yeah. hang on a sec. We've got an architect hang on, no, here. No, hang no, on no, no, no. Let I'm, me, a, I'm a technologist. <laughs> <laughs> Let me no, know my non-educated But you're a contractor. First. But you're a contractor. Yes, so. correct. Well, th there's, there's two, two major things, reasoning behind building permits. Two of them. You guys tell me what they are. I would have to say something to do with structural for safety of like well being of the structural, like say it's like a, a deck or something. Yeah, so it doesn't fall it's for basically, but that's one end of it. It's getting the permission to build a structure safely. That's basically it, right? And it's to get written authorization. 
of the about to happen work. That's the purpose behind a building permit. Good job, Dustin. Then, I don't know why I didn't hear that. Down. Okay, well, fine. Well, there's a <laughs> subsection to that, right? So I know that we brought this up on another podcast. So if you guys are listening on other podcasts, what are the seven most common code violations? I brought up five of these before. There's more than one. I got seven of them here, man. One of them right off the bat is working without a permit. Working without a permit. That's a violation. Does safety have to do anything with that permit or no? Not testing older materials for asbestos and lead now. That's a yeah. new one. We know that. We're, Improper we, fastening yeah. of deck ledgers to houses. Everyone at this know table that. knows that that bolt's got to go right through the whole structure now, right? It's not lag bolts anymore. No. Yeah. Unless you're in Hamilton. <laughs> Tap cons. <laughs> Quarter inch. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. And, we, and we, when I do a deck, I end up putting big steel plates on the other yeah. side. <laughs> Adding a basement bedroom without egress window. Yeah, I knew that. One. And I think that's five feet, right? You have to have. There's a square footage, yeah. 10 square feet. Yeah. So two by five. Feet, yeah. Venting bath fan into the attic. Wow. You can't do that, which how many times have we seen what that? What if you have a ridge vent? No, but he's just saying venting into no, the attic. No, venting into the, loose, the attic. Yeah. You that's, can't vent a bathroom exhaust into an attic. Well, that's even if you have a ridge vent and running down the whole thing. It has to, ex- it has to escape the house. Yeah, because then you to. get mold, right? Exactly. Yeah. Botched electrical work. That was a pretty common one we learned about the GFI. Let me take a guess. Botched plumbing. No. And the Come last on. one's got something to do with wood. <laughs> do with wood? Wood, 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 wood. Pressure treated wood. <laughs> Not following fence height requirements. They That's are six fence six height one, right? Requirements, yes. And through my little studies here, my team of minions that does all this research for me. <laughs> I recently (laughs) discovered that, and this is good news because I I thought it was something else. A building bylaw inspector, officer, person, someone is not allowed to enter your property without your permission. Oh, that I know. I didn't know that. I thought they do it all the time. They just walk on. I know, but they have to get your permission to do that. So just to let you contractors know, they need that permission. So they, I call it the vampire clause. You can't fucking bring them in unless you give them permission, right? What is the second thing is contractor or homeowner's permission? Homeowner's permission. That's, see, what that's if, where the what loophole if, is. But here's the other kicker on this. What if they see something in violation from the street? That's the reason why they... Okay, but they're not also allowed to take a camera and put it over the fence and photograph that violation on the property. I did not know that. No, but if it's like someone's not tied off on a roof, then can they enter? That's a Ministry of Labor issue. Oh, okay. That's not a building inspector. That's why a lot of guys put the newspaper up on the window. I was window just so about to say that. It. That's an old okay, school so, trick. Yeah. Yeah. And this, I thought this was podcast just is not about breaking laws. <laughs> 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 all right. So that was Building Code Talk with Manny. Good. I'm done with all my segments now. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm going home. <laughs> Let's get back to millennials, man. So, okay. Well, what is wrong with these guys and girls? I have yet to meet a millennial girl in construction. I have met you guys? one. She was a drywall taper. She good? She's pretty good. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna say no. I don't think I have. I've never. Have I, you? I know tons of girls in construction. Yeah, and I've worked millennials. with tons. Yes. Millennials. Yes. Millennials. Yes. Okay. Yes. And they're um, good workers. They're excellent workers as long as you keep them away from telephones or any kind of media. Hang on, let me just that's, write that group that's, down. That's, or, that's the or guys mirrors. too. <laughs> Wait a second. Everybody. I've got to do my makeup for a second. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> wow. <laughs> makeup on a construction site. I've seen it many times. Just eyeliner. Are you kidding me? <laughs> what, what I find also is that a, a lot of the, in my end of the business that I've experienced, a majority of them never were team players. They always were about them. Are winning. we still talking about women? Yes. But you started this whole thing by saying that you've had they're great hard workers. I don't understand. I'm saying a majority great workers, of them, but, but then, not good team workers. Yeah. So they're always out for their uh, wins or gains, and that's kind of speaking a, right instead now. Instead of a team. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, all hey, right. listen. All there's right. two kinds of athletes: there's a single athlete and a team athlete. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, so, so let's go. Let's go to number. Let's go to number three. What's number Um, three? Number three, one of my biggest problems with people coming into the business, they're always telling me they're worth $50 an hour when they're only worth $10 an hour. Or I should say, what was number one and two? We were talking about being on time and showing up at the job. Oh, that was way back. Yeah, Yeah. I forgot about that. No, but I, I just felt like if the problems that I've had. So, why do millennials have a problem getting on the job site on time? Everybody's got a phone. Because they're up all night on their phones Instagram, TikTok. Video games. What time you go to sleep, Carlito? In a regular day. Two. Fuck. Like what time you go to sleep? Twelve thirty. What time you go to sleep? Nine. Yeah. 
You go to sleep at nine? Don't bully me. He does. He does. He stops I go to bed at 10, 10, 30. If it's 10, 30, I start to doze off. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I got to get up at four. I get up at 5, 30. Yeah. I'm and saying. you're going to bed at two? Yeah, it doesn't affect me. It I've will. been doing it for years. It will. I'm 48. <laughs> I've been doing it for over 30 I'm years. I'm not a doctor, but it will. It does, affect, it it does affect a couple things. It affects your relationship with your, <laughs> with your other. <laughs> um <laughs> I'm going to sleep in the other room. That fucking TV's been on all night. <laughs> I was doing it for years. I'm not happy, though. <laughs> uh, okay, so I want to try to... We haven't come up with any solutions, man. I started this whole podcast. Well, okay, insane. so the solutions is, for guys our age, just shut up and work. Don't think you know it all, because we don't. That's the thing. We, Dustin more than me, knows a lot about this industry. I go about every day. I know a little bit, but on the grand scheme, I know fuck all. And that's your attitude. You got to know but that. But that's your attitude because what I know about you when I first met you and I started talking to you, you actually, I've said this over and over. The more you say you don't know fuck all, it means that you're saying it in a tone that you want to learn. I'm eager to learn. And, I'm, yes. You have to have that hunger, that thirst that you want to go out every day and learn something new. So why aren't the majority of these millennials have that hunger? If I knew, I'd be a millionaire. <laughs> I think it's because of what I've heard from other reasons is that they have everything in their life yeah they have a cushion this covid thing is the first time that you guys are actually going through shit carlito and i have gone through recessions well, before yeah. we didn't go through wars but we we've gone through recessions this is the first time that you guys have gone through something dramatic where all of a sudden i'm not bringing money in and i have to figure out what i've saved and what can i survive how can i survive maybe this is a wake-up call for them maybe it's not i don't think so i don't think they're hungry enough i don't think they're i i think that this new generation really doesn't need the things we need like my daughter doesn't care about a car license. It was one of the most important tools in my like archive. Well, most millennials are yeah, using like, Ubers and Lyfts. I need a car. <laughs> I can't run a business without a car. I can't travel without a car. I can't do anything without a car. When I turned 16, my 16th birthday, I had Boom. to go get my license. Same with me. Yeah. My, my brother, two, three weeks. My Did you buy your like, first car? Technically, no. I traded a four-wheeler for a truck. Wicked. But, yeah. Excellent. Good yeah, choice. My, my brother, <laughs> my brother was like my parents had to push him to go get his. Why didn't he want it? Just didn't want it. He was he's the typical millennial. He sits millennial. at home. And he plays video games. Growing up, built computers and yeah. But he's, he's probably he, gonna have a career in that. Yeah. Well, no, he's a construction manager now for his father in law's concrete business. Very successful. But again, he sits at a computer all day. I'm going to get in trouble if he listens to this. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> no, but the, I'm going to tell the whole family he, to listen. He, he sits in, at a computer all day and just tells people what to do a lot of the time. But that's his job, paycheck. though? He's a construction manager. Good for yeah. him. <laughs> yeah. But even now, like renovating his basement, he calls my dad over to help him. Because he doesn't know. Yeah. And he doesn't want to know. I wouldn't say he doesn't want to know. It's just... Growing up, I always wanted to go to work with my dad. I, I always wanted to work with my hands and do all that. And he would just sit at home, build computers, and stay indoors. I don't yeah. know if it's a millennial problem. I think it's just there's different types of people. Yeah. That's all. Because it's with every age, right? Oh, I've met, I've but met it's, lazy. But it's gender. bigger than ever now. Like They say people, place, and things. But I'm talking to all my friends' kids. And all, all of our kids are like 25 years old. Or you know, between 20 and 30 years old, all my friends' kids, right? I got a 25-year-old at home right now. She doesn't work. She's sits in her room for 10 11 hours that's not the, that's not the way i brought her up i brought her up doing drywall at six yeah you know i had her doing all the screws sweeping up i had the, the little helmet from home depot and you know i dressed her up at work because that's how i got to spend time with her you try to bring someone up and they're just going to be the people they are and all her friends they all just don't do anything they want to be in a room and play on online and should we ban phones yeah there on should be a sites? time. There on should be a time. On job sites, if you're using it for work, use it for work. But I don't think unless you're a GC or... No, I'm saying for the subtrades. I'm saying for all the employees and subtrades, phones are banned. Put it in a little box like you're at a restaurant kind yes. of thing. <laughs> Is well, that too extreme? I think so. At the In union jobs, you're not allowed to have your phone on. You're not? No. You can go at, at your first break. You can go at lunch and you can go at the end of the day. Yeah, I used to work at like you're a, working, a, a shipping company, and you had to put it in your locker. Each break, you could go and get on it. If you were on it on the floor, you'd get written up for it. Okay, but here's the thing. So it's not... It's but not, pe people you, still didn't work. No, so but you as a GC, if you're on the job site, people need to get a hold of you. Subtrade, suppliers, clients. Now you're going to put your phone in a box, and you're not going to get a hold of these guys. I do it all... damage your business more no, than... No, no. You know what? I, I tell all my potential customers, I say, hey, listen, I'm going to put my phone in my car. 
and there's going to be a few hours you are not going to hear from me. When you do hear from me, that will be my downtime and we can catch up. I have to make money. Right now is even a worse time. There's so many people dropping the costs of their jobs that they're working for almost nothing. So you got to work your balls off to make some money. Yeah. So why the hell do I want to spend my day on the phone answering stupid questions? I'll call you back when I'm on the road to get material. I'll call you back when I'm on the road to go get my lunch. I don't need to talk to you through the doubt of the day unless I'm a just I, a I just bring up the phone thing because it seems like it's part of the problem. Yeah. I, I think a lot too is a, like a respect issue too. Not yeah, just a millennial sure. thing. Because you see older people on their phones and stuff too. Not as much, but I have. I think it's a respect thing. They don't respect your time. They don't respect the money that you're making. They're getting paid whether they're on their phone or not. Yeah, I've brought this up before where if they're getting paid by the hour and they're on their phone, then that's not fair. That's not right. Exactly. You t- make that phone call, unless there's an emergency going on in your family or your life or whatever. Sure, but make that phone call on your break, your lunch, yeah. after work, before work. But there's sometimes that I have guys working for me and they make more money than me because they're not carrying their <clears throat> weight. When I hire someone for $25 an hour, they need to make their 25 plus an extra 10 an hour. That means $35. If I'm not making any money, I don't need you. And until sure. people get that attitude, they're not making any money off their employees, then get rid of them and let them learn the hard way. No jobs. Is there a problem with millennials and weed on construction sites? Not that I've found. They don't stay. Not so much. I've had a few sub trades that will come back a little stoned. I'm like, no, not today. Good for you, man. It's my job it's my profession right so if the client comes and the place smells like a damn skunk you know like it makes me look bad yeah (laughs) you gotta cover your ass i had a few people when i was i was a foreman for a kitchen company and i said i don't care if you guys do it but do it after you're done work like yeah smoke all you want after i was like just don't do it during the day or before you come to work and they had no problem with that i don't need guys spacing out in a closet (laughs) if they're painting it and where is that guy hey man i'm over here man what what was i gonna do i had a guy fall asleep in a living room once (laughs) oh my god (laughs) he just sat in the corner and took a nap for like an hour what if the homeowner's smoking pot that's fine let him smoke pot it's recreational it's allowed okay don't bring it around us yeah or my guys i'm just i'm still trying to figure out some solutions here solutions (laughs) solutions <laughs> i gave you one i I, I, I honestly really think it, it when it comes down to hiring it doesn't really matter what age they are it's about who they are as an individual and how hungry they are if they show you how, hung, how hungry they are i don't care about your age would you rather a millennial just come straight up to you carlito and go and you ask them okay listen what do you want like, what do you want? The same way that you asked, okay, how much you want to get paid for your daily rate or whatever it is, right? Do you want to ask these millennials, okay, what is your objective here? What's your ultimate goal here? Are you here just to make money for this week, this month, this year? Or are you actually interested in learning about what I have to give or what my team has to give? Are you interested in being a GC of your own one day and running your own business? Are you in, like, Would you ask those, all those questions and expect justifiable answers from these kids or not? No. Um, no? No. Because I, I, I would. I would. You would think that millennials right now exclude us, but I'm saying you think millennials right now know what they want. No way. No, they don't. They're, no. they're maturing at 40 years old. That's what I'm saying. And even at 40, they're not maturing. And I'm not saying it to bash. I'm just being... <laughs> you get the odd, odd few though, that about. do. That do know what they want. Yeah, like, you're right. Like, like us, for example. Like I knew... Going from job to job, like even though I did have job to job, I was learning what to do and what not to do. But I always knew where I wanted to grow and what I where I wanted to end. Like I always wanted to own my own business. Would you guys tell the millennials, listen, work for me for the week for free, and I'll tell you what your rate's going to be next week? I actually had a kid, my fiance's father's girlfriend's kid. Okay, Luke, <laughs> if, if you can follow that. <laughs> <laughs> He wanted to get into kitchens and stuff. And I said, look, if you really want to do this, take a day off of work. Come work with me for free. You can see I can teach you. I can show you how to do it. I had okay for my boss. And he said, okay. He did. He came and worked and he was great. He ended up leaving his job and he worked for me for about a month and a half. And he was great. What happened after the month and a half? Uh, He got a job at a union. Good for him. Right on. That's a a smart move. So I said, I said, no, take it. Yeah, like, that's a great job. Benefits, pension. I, I had my niece approach me, ask me to work on my job site because she wanted to learn about finishing carpentry, and then she offered up a rate, and I said, "I'm not paying you anything. I got to see what you can do first, right? 
she didn't end up showing up. She didn't want to come. She just that, that was the end of the conversation. Yeah. See, I think it's I'm okay like you're to brand have new. a rate, but uh, maybe some people are a bit more unreasonable than others where you're going to try to charge journeyman rate, like 30 bucks an hour or more. And it's like, you're just starting out. Here's a question for you guys. You guys are recently business owners that are working together as a partnership. Are you guys finding that they come in asking their age for their rate? What do you mean? Employees? The subtrades, employees, subtrades. No. Uh, no. Well, they're we're, asking for less or We're going more? to try to keep it in-house right now because we can do pretty much everything. We don't need the employees You yet. guys can't do everything because you're not licensed no, plumbers or saying, electricians. We have our electricians. We have our plumbers. We have our HVAC guys. But regarding laborers, you guys are going to need a laborer to come in or no? You're not going to need a laborer to come in. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe like demo and stuff. Yes. Or just do we're that not shy of work though. That's the thing. We're not trying to take off more than we can chew. We're going to do one or two jobs. Okay, I guess time. I guess I'm trying to get to my question is what you guys got to pay a millennial? <laughs> what would I? So if they live at home and obviously these are all deciding factors if you're living at home you don't have a cost of living i'm not going to pay you the same i'd pay someone that has a mortgage has a lease but he rolls up in a mercedes with spinners on it i I, ideally if if i (laughs) if i were hiring a millennial i and i had we had a shop i would say you know what come to the interview wear some work clothes and i'd put them on the tools that would be his interview not so much talking to him you can talk and talk and like my experience i started when i was three four years old I'm 29 and I'm not going to put, yeah, I started three years old on my resume because it's not going to look good. <laughs> right? What do you mean? But, <laughs> yeah, I heard guys electricians at 10. Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't mean that I can work. Yeah, I've had all these jobs in all these industries, but it doesn't mean I can actually work until you actually see what you can do. So I'd say, hey, come here, cut this miter, cut this, do some crown molding, do that. And if you can do it, then yeah, then we can talk about your reef. I think the problem is, is that when it comes to construction, it's the one job that everyone can have or get. You don't need school to be in construction. You don't need to be able to speak English to be in construction. <laughs> no, uh, th- this true. is true. But no, you need true. common sense, which a lot of people no, are. So- no, sometimes, sometimes you don't. You know, 30 years ago, almost 30 years ago, I was hiring guys from shelters. I just needed them for demolition to carry stuff and uh, load up the truck. And I didn't need someone to think. I just needed someone to be safe. Don't get hurt on my job site. These are the hours. Go home. If you don't come back the next day, I don't care. And I just think that people are like, oh, you know what? It's going to be too hard to get that job. But you know what? I can paint. You know, I can paint for a week or I could do framing for a week. And really, they find out that this is a harder job than people think. Construction's not easy. Here's a series of questions. As a GC, if a millennial asks me these questions... How would you guys answer them? Because you guys are quite like, okay. Okay. What happened to you personally at home and reason why you are coming in late? Does that have any relevance whatsoever to your business and right now to do work? No. Nothing. No. Correct? I'm offended Correct. you asked. <laughs> I agree with you. It's the same thing. It's got nothing to do with me. So it's like if you ran out of weed, it's got nothing to do with me. Again, and I'll bring up your car broke down. It's got nothing to do with me. I'll bring up another thing. You go work for the union. You don't talk about what happened in the weekend or yesterday. Hey, man, you want to talk after work? And that's it. Keep your eyes on safety. There's backhoes working. There's electrical wires. There's guys that could fall in holes. You're paying attention to the safety problems or potential hazards, not Hey, man, what'd you do last? Oh, I smoked a joint last night, man. I was, you know. So why don't we bring up some more of those union kind of regulations in custom rentals? Because they don't, we don't have them. I feel custom. like union is a very, what's the word? Like tight knit, tight ship to no, run but, but compared what, to residential. There's more relaxed vibes on residential than it would be on a commercial site. But I, I really think that's where a lot of people are wrong. I don't think you should get into construction to be relaxed. I think that when you start at six o'clock in the morning or seven o'clock in the morning, your hustle's on, man. You got to work for your money, not hang around. Like I don't, I don't want to make friends with my, you know, homeowners. I haven't seen a polo shirt since high school, man. You like that? <laughs> 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 and how's I'm that veal? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just looking at the horse. I'm Are going to sponsor my polo. <laughs> <laughs> no. So I'm just trying to figure out how many more things are not relevant when a millennial comes on the job site and just starts to let you as if you're supposed to care. Yeah. Like I'm, I was in Tim Hortons waiting for my coffee or I don't know. There's it's got so, nothing to do with so me. There's so many dumb excuses and it just doesn't matter. You're late. You're late. That's bottom line. You're late. Yeah. You're late, man. Yeah. Pick up your slack. Stay 10 minutes later. Whatever. Right. 
Well, it shows who you are as a character. When- no, exactly. It shows if you show up late, especially in your first week to the job site, you don't respect the business. You don't respect your employer. You're, you don't respect anything. So you shouldn't be showing up you late, don't respect period. Yourself. <laughs> no. I don't understand. Like, be I've, early. All my jobs that I've ever had in my life from like starting in 13, I've never been late, man. No, I've been early. I've been late when I've actually gotten to be the boss. Yeah. Then I'm like, I, I'll show up late, but I'm still calling in. You yeah, know but you're I mean? late for different reasons. Yeah, Maybe exactly. you're doing emails so, in the morning. Something else has come up, right? Paperwork or something, yeah. I got a little story. I ended up being about, at this time, I was 19 years old. I was running my own construction company. Oh, we're going way back. Eh? Yeah, really way back. <laughs> One of my friends was working for an insurance company, and he saw that I was always working, and he, he was older than me, and he was like, hey, man, you want to work for me? I'm like, no, I got my own gigs. I'm going to stick with what I'm doing, because I had two jobs, working at night and then working for myself. So he said, hey, man, can you refer someone? And back then, you know, you're always referring your friends, trying to give them jobs. So I referred a guy. I got a phone call that next morning. And he's like, hey, man, your guy <laughs> never showed up. So guess what? And I'm like, what? He's like, you're coming to replace him because I've been waiting for him for an hour. And I'm like, fuck, man. I close up my day. I take off. I go work for the guy. Same pay as the guy was going to get, which was half of what I was making for myself, ended up being a great relationship. I learned something about the guy that I was going to get a job for. Never again would I give him a job. And two, it created, it got me a gig with insurance company. And for the next eight years, I had so much work, I couldn't keep up with it. So for someone's mistake, I gained something. But that's only like one story out of them all, right? So the key thing is, though, you had accountability. When that client called you, you showed up. A lot of people I know, if someone doesn't show up, they go, well, that day's a wash. You're the boss. Go take on the job. There's been a few people not going to say any names <laughs> that have done that. So they, they just don't, they like, okay, so what happened to that guy? Like, did he disappear? Was he murdered? What's, I don't understand. No, he just felt like sleeping in. He didn't really care. He, he was talking to me when he was like, I want a job. I need money. I gave him an opportunity with someone I don't know. And he burnt that bridge for me almost. I repaired that, that relationship and got that guy's respect. And I ended up getting eight years of hundreds of gigs from insurance companies like they were giving me small and big jobs so it worked out excellent for me. how do we get these guys to work more passionately harder better uh, get them to the, the funny thing is that i keep saying i don't care what's going on in your personal life i don't give a shit what's going on in your personal life i have nothing to do with it but you're on my job site now and you're being paid by me or the client or whatever they should care about what's going on here they should care that they should give us a full let's go back to my circle of friends right i joke with them about their eight hour day the amount of productivity that they actually pull off in an eight hour day is probably closer to two or three hours yeah the rest of the day is literally fucking the dog it's deciding on what's going on their social talking about their friends what's for lunch what's for lunch what's happening in the afternoon how pack is the train going to be like stuff like that. So, but on a construction site, we can't do that. No. You're running a business. You can't do that. You can't have a 10 hour day, come in and work hard for two hours and expect to finish that job anytime soon. That's too, like growing up with working with my dad. It's the same thing. I would sit down for like two hours, go on my phone, have my lunch and I'd get my paycheck and it'd be like six hours and be like, but I worked for eight. He's like, no, you worked for six. You were there for eight. Be work for six. <laughs> I love this guy. And I was, it just, that mentality was like, just work, work, work. Like I never, after that, I never took lunches anymore. We never, we just worked throughout the day. And it's the way I've always been brought up. It's you work hard and you work all day. You don't stop. So the next time a millennial comes and works for me and I see that they didn't give me eight hours, I am only going to pay them four hours. I go, here's your pay. Yeah, well, I, you, I learned you my can't lesson. legally do that. You just but that's what sucks because why not? You're bleeding money out of your account then. They're taking a check just for standing on the job site. You're just yeah. taking up real but, estate. Pay rent if you're gonna sit here all day. Uh, but I, I really I really believe that uh, as whole as you know, company owners that we all are here at the table, doesn't matter what age we're at. I mean, you guys are a different breed at your age. Like, you know, you guys aren't here because you're bad guys. You guys are here because you're good guys. The bad guys would have showed up today. They would have showed up late or they wouldn't have showed up. Say hello to the so, bad guy. Yeah, this is the last time you're going to see a bad guy like me. But you can even say, so what time was this podcast supposed to be recorded? At 7? Seven? 7-ish. What time like did we show up at? Yeah, you guys showed up 6.30. early. Different yeah, breed. Even earlier. 
Yeah. And and he got lost on the way. But well, <laughs> but we are talking. No, I didn't. But but this is the thing. You still have made time for being lost, and you still weren't late. And that's the difference. And what we're talking about is the problems we all have at any age. We're having problems with with guys not coming, not doing what they're supposed to be doing, or not having so the right attitude. So they're not coming in. They're showing up late because they're not passionate about it and they don't care about your business. And lying about certain skill sets, saying you're a master carpenter when you don't know how to cut a miter properly. There's just there's okay. A long we got to take another segment. <laughs> Let's take another segment. And hang on. We'll do it. this. Will be a quick one. Yeah. Uh, it is what? It's Green Book Talk with Carlito. Oh, thanks, Manny. <laughs> Are you guys familiar with your Green Book? Nope. No. We're slowly I have becoming. One. I have one. I have one. I legally, you're know, supposed to have one. I don't know where it is, but I have one. I got it in school. It's actually why I listen to these podcasts to learn about the green book. Do you know that it's law to have a green book on your site? You have yes. to have it. Really? I, I knew that. Worker failing to wear full body harness connected to fall arrest system while or getting off a suspended work platform. What do you guys think that fine would be? First uh, offense. Probably like 350, 400. Christian? I'll take 500. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, if we go over, are we wrong? Is it who's closer? Is, is it no, who, no, 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 it's, it's who's here, right. But one dollar. This one dollar. Knowledge is the only prize here, guys. Uh, listen, <laughs> if, if we're building a house right now and someone said build it 16 on center, there is no 15. There is no four. It's 16 on center. <laughs> okay, I'm going to change my answer. 250. <laughs> so are we, you staying with that? 250. And you Final said 350? Answer. 350. Your answer? I'm going to say 250. No, wait, that's that's a 550. Okay, so your first offense is $350. Dun, da, da, da. <laughs> Our guest is a winner. <laughs> what a nerd. I, I, I must say I do have forest safety <laughs> training. <laughs> but, so. but these are the things that you know are important, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, one of my buddies fell off of a roof because he didn't have the harness on. You know, he's paralyzed now. Uh, my wife just told me two weeks ago she had a, a framer, third floor, had his harness on. He went to go reach for a piece of wood because he was losing his balance. The wood gave and he went off the, and now he's in critical condition still. Yeah. My, so, tra- my trainer for my fall arrest, he actually fell while he was wearing it and he was three stories up and it was going to be three hours before the fire department came and they actually just cut the rope on him so he would fall or else he would lose his legs. Yeah, he, but they probably got a blanket ankles. or something for nope, him, right? Nope. Right onto the ground, broke both his ankles. Really? I saw a little yeah. trick. You Why? Because the, the harness was actually now. digging well, into his legs. Yeah, it cuts the circulation from your legs. And they even say, too, once you, you got to let go, release it slowly. So they say if you're hanging for a while, push you up against a wall and slowly release your legs or else you'll blood clot and it'll go to your brain and you yeah. can die. Whoa. Where yeah. now, just this is probably too much information for all the listeners and you guys, but <laughs> I always have a blanket in my van. <laughs> So Everyone grab a corner. Would, yeah, grab a corner, <laughs> boys. Let's catch them. Yeah. <laughs> I no, have a blanket for driving. We're, yeah. <laughs> we're making jokes about it, but this is pretty it's, serious. Like, oh yeah. A yeah. uh, uh, reason we bring this up and the building code talk is uh, for awareness for guys to practice before you they know. There's get some their license. some value in history talk too. As yeah. Well, okay? Oh, I love your history talk. <laughs> I love it. I learned a lot about this. I fucking work hard on these things, okay? Dude, you do a great job. Um, (laughs) Can we please come up with some solutions? Because I don't think we came up with fucking any. No, there is a solution. What's the solution? The solution is if you're lazy, don't come to work. Well, that's that's also a solution, <laughs> but Carlito, please enlighten me. So What's the solution? Now, after thirty years in business, there was a time that I had thirty guys working for me at one time. I I had ten guys working for me at one time, and then there was times I had only one guy working for me. What I've really realized that in this business, renovating houses, is I don't rely on anybody or depend on anyone but me. So when I go to work every single day except for your partner, you should, your partner should be the same page as you. Those are the only two people that I rely or depend on. The rest of them, if they don't show up, I'll just get another guy. I'm so used to getting different guys that now I kind of have a feeling when I know someone, usually I don't hire someone doesn't have a job. Like usually I hire someone that has a job and say, you know, hey, I'd like to work with you. And I'm like, well, this guy's working. So I'll steal him from there and I'll keep him. How do you guys know each other? (laughs) You want to tell the story? We met from the last employer. <laughs> yeah. So you guys were working for somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. I was working for a kitchen company out of Oakville, and I just I was driving to like North York every day from Hamilton. I was just 
commute's terrible. Oh, that's a commute. Oh, it was brutal. Especially and back then, it was like buck fifty. Yeah, <laughs> a liter. Jesus. Yeah. So I was like, I need something closer. So I put out the application online. Two days later, he called me up. He's like, Yeah, come work for me. Whatever. So I was like, Okay, yeah. And then he had his own company, and he stopped that coming to work for this other guy to try to make some more ends meet and be a little easier. And we just kind of we learned the the don'ts. In the do's and the don'ts of what not to do in a company. And, uh, yeah, we became good friends. We didn't actually like each other at first. No, we hated each other. <laughs> <laughs> Makes the best friendship. Why, did, why didn't you guys like each other? Well, the first day I met him, he had gone off site to do passport paperwork. What were yeah, you doing? Yeah, I had to go get my passport done. So <laughs> I left at like 3 o'clock. And I was almost like a, a supervisor for that job just to see what's going on. I'm like, where's the new guy? And, oh, he left a couple hours ago and he gets his. I've been here the whole time. I'm like, right. And I started picking his work apart. The floor is on a slope. Basement bathroom but then afterwards we learned to like each other because we had a common knowledge common pride help me out here pride the word i'm looking for common ground of hate hate is a strong word (laughs) (laughs) oh you mean for bad work bad management yeah bad management so yeah yeah. but that's okay but the thing is but that's that's interesting because you know what you forgot to do a segment today we forgot to say thank you to Mark, Mark at Skylux. Skylux. Correct. So thank that's you, Mark. the reason. Thank you, Mark. Uh, so the reason I bring that up is because Mark started Skylux because he was working for somebody else who was doing bad work and running a bad ship. And he paid attention to all the bad things that he was doing. And then he built Skylux to what the business is right now. So that's what you guys are doing right now. So yeah. it's good that you were there for the period of time that you were because you picked on... The the, the bad what, stuff. The what not to do. Yeah. It, was, not, it wasn't a waste. Like, I don't think anything's a waste of time or nothing like that because there's always a lesson to be learned. Depends on how you look at it. So I didn't really learn anything of value, but I definitely learned what not to do there. What tools do you guys use? Oh, stop. A, a drill. Um. No, no. No <laughs> brand. <laughs> <What> brand? <laughs> that was good. I like it. The sharp You're going to make me go out there, DeWalt? <laughs> yeah. All right. They're I, yellow boys. I, I know. I, I really, like I really, DeWalt. I really hate Bosch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, actually, I have a Bosch skill saw, and it is great. The thing is phenomenal. Uh, um, Tell but, Carlino the truth that you hate Hilti. Uh, actually, I've never used a Hilti. Do we actually. own Hilti? Uh, no, I, I think I have believe. a fast intercept don't, by Hilti. That's don't about worry. It. One day you will remember me and say, why didn't I listen to him? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, I used, so hang on. So what are you guys? I used to be Milwaukee and DeWalt. You used um, to be? Yeah, until about a month ago when I had all of my tools stolen. No. Yep. So now I am some Milwaukee and I just got the new uh, Metabo triple hammer impact gun. And that thing is phenomenal. Are you going to replenish everything with red? Probably. Probably Milwaukee. It's a mix. Like I think for our chop saws, table saws, we have DeWalt. A couple of hand tools, we have DeWalt. We have Makita. We have... My condolences. Okay. For our okay. saws, we have Milwaukee. Uh, we definitely don't have any Ryobi or Rigid, so we're doing well. Yeah. <laughs> Just so you know, it's, it's I a, still have DeWalt tools. Yes. And, so, I, so does, so and DeWalt same. put me in this industry. Like, if I didn't have my DeWalt, I don't know what I would have used. But oh, now God. I use Hilti. Yeah, what, what, would you, <laughs> what would you use to hang those pictures in your house? <laughs> hey, Ryobi. <Ryobi. laughs> <laughs> yeah. And what you say? Ryobi. Ryobi. <laughs> Okay. Ryobi is the true homeowner set. <laughs> so ju- I just want to take uh, away from the question for a sec. I do want to say something. I've been robbed many times. And for any listeners out there, please don't buy stolen equipment from yeah. anyone that steals tools because they're taking our livelihood and their money away from our children, our our vacations. Well, the sad truth and our is business. that if your tools were stolen, they most likely were stolen by another contractor. Mine were homeless people. Was it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, Just but eventually, but eventually, what the point is is that somebody that's buying a stolen tool needs it for for construction yeah. Yeah. of some kind. Yeah. So as long as we all stick together and don't buy stolen tools, like I get guys all the time saying to me, "Hey man, I got this," and I'm like, "Hey man, is that yours or is it stolen?" They're like, oh, "It's stolen." I'm like, "Get the fuck out of here, man." We had a guy show up on for the last company we worked with. He had two buckets of Makita <laughs> tools, and he's like, "Dude, he's like the guy left the fresh coat parking lot, and these fell off the back of his truck." Yeah, right. <laughs> And he had to really like, dude, like, take him back idiot. to the grocery store. Like, he might come back. I, for I was him. mad that day. I was like, yeah. "What are you doing?" Anyways, I don't, I don't support douchebags. 
that steal tools from somebody that works hard. So, I've been ripped off before. I lost, I think, almost five grand in tools. Yeah, and at a shop, stacks, one shop. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my which... Bosch, my big Bosch uh, hammer drill, the core bit one, the core bits with it, laser levels, drills. Well, you got impact. Manny's attention yeah. there. <laughs> hey, yeah, I do own Bosch. <laughs> yeah. See, they have yeah. Bosch, but um, they have Dewalt. I have one Bosch. <laughs> you guys being construction, what do you think is more important, pickup truck or vans? Oh, well, well, we you, have both. You, we have both. <laughs> oh, beautiful! I have my yeah. truck with. Uh, You've got a van, fourteen yeah. foot trailer. So I, have a, I have a Dodge Caravan set up with like. Well, it's not completely done yet, but it's got racking system, drawers, and everything in the back of it. So it's the contractor series. How do you like so. the trailer? I like it because you can leave it on job sites, or you can fill it with garbage. So it's yeah. nice. I like the flexibility of being able to have your tools and material and be able to pick them up, drop them off, and not have to, you know, have a van all the time. It's just nicer. I don't know. I'm, oh. I'm, I'm not really, I've been torn in between getting a, a sprinter or keeping my truck. So I'm not like dead set on owning a truck. So I did all three. I got a pickup truck, I got a van, and I got trailers. And I think they all have their purpose. It depends yeah. on what you need. So Yeah, because like for us, it's, my van's kind of more set up with everything. So it's like once you're done with the major material and the garbage of the trailer, we just show up with my van and his truck. If we need material, he can go get it in his truck, but all the tools are in my van. It's just Beautiful. everything's there, tape, whatever you need. My van is my everyday tools that I know I'm going to use at site. Your Savannah van? Safari van? I don't van? have a what Savannah. It? It's an Express. <laughs> <laughs> But then I have my pickup truck. I'll I'll hook up my dump trailer to or my tri axle and your eco line. What what do you mean? (laughs) Is it a Ford? Ford four (laughs) fifty. Dooley baby. (laughs) Can we get back to millennials? Yes, (laughs) this is millennials. That's what we drive. (laughs) No, I get why you have a trailer and whatever because you still have a pickup truck that you use for personal use. Yeah, once in a while. Yeah, I'm always working, so there's really. But the no thing is, at time. one at some point, you're gonna have a business vehicle, and you're gonna have a personal vehicle. Yeah, you're probably yeah. gonna have several personal vehicles. Hopefully, that's the dream. Probably get a sports car. <laughs> that's the dream. Like, wh- whereas, but, whereas with me, it's like I have a van, but at the same time, my fiance and we have our, our own car, so we do have a nice car that we have. Like we take our. I think that's a good around. idea to have because then you guys, it's it's nice walking into a clean vehicle. <sighs> Tell clean. her that. Tell her to clean it. It's my hard to keep clean. a vehicle clean when you're I keep my clean. personal vehicle clean. Yeah. yeah. It's cleaner right. than my van. Yeah. I'd hope so. I think my van's cleaner than her car right now. <laughs> so <laughs> we haven't given the millennials any solutions other than just shut the fuck up and show up on work. time and work. Work hard. That's the That's thing. The it's just, okay, here's one thing my dad taught me growing up. You have one mouth and two ears. Your mouth can shut. Your ears can't. So sometimes you just got to shut your mouth and listen. Wow. Because there's a lot of value in learning from people that have done it before you. Learning from the Mannies, learning from the Carlitos, learning from, you know, the gyms. Everybody above you that is doing well or is in a place where you want to be, just shut up and listen to them. I just realized by him saying our names right now that we could actually be Spanish or Mexican. Learn from the Mannies and learn from the Carlitos. Do you know how many times people (laughs) think I'm Spanish? (laughs) I thought you were Spanish. The only place I, I was in Carlito Italy. Carlito is not a Croatian name. Listen, I was in Italy one time on the beach <laughs> and someone said Carlito and they start talking Italian to me and I'm like, at least they think I'm Italian. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you got a very valid point. So, okay. But I mean, well, like what else? What else are we going to do for these guys? What are we going to do? So, okay. What are the biggest things with millennials? We're impatient. Yes. We're entitled. Well, self-absorbed. Yes. yes. Oh, wow. There's a lot. Tech. Tech, social, glued to your phone, trying to perceive that you're super successful on Instagram and but social I mean, media. Like, even the tech side, like it's not all that. It's not great, but it's not bad either. But there's good tech. It helps yeah. you with your business. Because yeah. even like like on our right. Instagram, I don't know if you guys seen the the renders that we've done. Yeah, I did those. Oh, did you really? Yeah. So we did those in house. I did those. I went. That's what I did in school. So that kind of tech is good to have. You're but, so right. But then, like, but that's your business tech. That makes sense. I'm talking about social media and Tinder. Well, Tinder. Tinder. I can't, hey, I can't knock Tinder. That's where I met my love. So. <laughs> <laughs> I've never yet. I, I've been married for so long. I don't even, I have never gone on Tinder, but my buddies are always like, I'm going on a date tonight. <laughs> and I'm like, good for you guys. They're are on you, Tinder? I used to have to chase them down blocks. <laughs> <laughs> Back to millennials, man. <laughs> How are we solving this problem? How do we contribute to it? How are we adding to it? I don't know. What, the, how, well, what are we doing? I, I think that 
they need to find out what they really want to do and stop wasting people's time. Respecting our business. You guys are now on your own. You guys are running a shop now. You've got overhead now, and now you are going to have to hire some sub trades, and eventually you will have to hire laborers. So you are going to have money coming in, money going out. So you are going to be conscious. You're going to hear that cash register. It's going to fucking ding. If you're a money and you're coming in, you don't know what you want to do. Don't come in and ask for $35 an hour. No, come in and like, start at 20 bucks an hour. You're 15 I have 18. yet to meet a millennial that wants anything less than 25 you don't Start want to you, and if, expect a raise in three months. But if yeah, you're not working, the, if, you, if you don't have the skills or the background to say that you've worked in construction or anything, then honestly, you're not worth it. Well, and the conflict is that they're calculating their expenses regarding their car payment, their phone payment, their rent payment, if they have it. And they're going, this is how much money I need, which is 25 plus an hour. And then you're calculating how much work needs to be done in the set amount of time. And you're calculating 20 bucks an hour. So who's right? Who's wrong? But if they were willing, if they had the drive to get to that 30 bucks an hour and you offered them 20 for the first month to see how they work to get up to that 25, they would figure a way to make that work. If they wanted that drive to get there, they would. Cause I even when I I've been there. when I last lost or left my last job to work for this other guy, I took a pay cut because I wanted to get somewhere. It was closer to home, and I knew where I wanted to get, so I took a pay cut. It so, hurt, but I took a pay cut, and so did he. Nice, so yeah, so did I for the first what three months? Yep, something like that, and it hurt. I really believe that I won't pay anyone more than twenty five dollars an hour working for me. I just won't. If you're worth more than twenty five dollars an hour, I will sub the work out to you with the expectations of it being done exactly how I tell you. And if you don't do it, you won't get paid for that. Exactly how I asked for it. And if you agree to that, it should be exactly that way. If you're getting, if you're working for me, you're typically making between 15 and $20 an hour and you're mixing mud for me, making thin sit for me, putting floor protection down for me, putting plastic up, going to carry some, uh, like you're not really worth anything to me except for keeping me off of, you know, me on the tools is more productive than me making mud or making thin set yeah. or you're cutting the, skilled, a tile. the skilled parts. Not yeah. The prep. Okay. Yeah. So you, you're GC, you leave the job site. The millennials are there working away. You come back to the job site. They were given the scope of work that needed to be done. They didn't achieve everything. All of a sudden you come back and you're disappointed at the, the amount of work that's done. Do you sugarcoat it or do you just tell them the truth that you're not happy about this shit? Just and then how, happy. how do they react to it? How should they react to it? I would tell them I'm not happy. They probably wouldn't be too happy. That um, you're telling them that you're not too happy. Yeah, because a lot of millennials do have excuses. <laughs> What would these excuses be? Well, I've been in this situation, so I've left the job set to go look at another job, and I had a buddy of mine, but he was working. He was a good worker. He just didn't know it all. So I gave him a couple tasks that I knew were just easy to do. I think it was uh, knocking down all the nails on the subfloor, making sure they're pulled out. We were getting ready for hardwood flooring. I came back. It was two hours later, and he was maybe halfway done the room. It was 600 square feet. And you thought for sure that room should have been done by now. For me, I look at it, me personally, how long would it take me to do something? If I'm not on my phone, if I'm working two hours, an hour, whatever, right? And if they're not accomplishing that in that time, then yeah, we got a bit of a problem. Because what are you doing in that time? Are you in the bathroom? Are you taking a dump for an hour? Are you on your phone? Are you going to eat lunch? Are you just doing nothing? And that's fair. And that's all money. That's just. I would just be honest with them. I would just tell them. I don't care about you. That's one long ass dump. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, I know guys that do that. That's a rough thing. There's lots of guys that go to the bathroom. If they bring their phone and their smokes, they're going to be in there for 15, 20 minutes. This is what I was telling Manny. I really believe that if, you know, you can go to, say, a spy store and you can get this little device. And when you get into your into your customer's house, you can turn it on and it just stops any data. What is that? An EMP? Yeah, and it's <laughs> just those phone illegal. Calls. No, it's not. It's TV. not illegal. But okay, you know. but if we we go back to okay, what if you need to get a hold of your employer that's there with the phone and now there's an they, emergency? Yeah. Here's the thing: we're thinking right now of how can we babysit them. I don't want to babysit them, but it shouldn't be like that. Fucking, I'm not a babysitter. But you're, you are right. I'm you, all you, for catering to people, making a safe and happy and healthy work environment. But if I gotta, you know, put up with you rolling to work at ten o'clock, your shit oh, attitude. They, uh, turn it's, around. It's not get the fuck exactly. Out. Yeah, get back on the bus and go. It's it's not going to fly. I had the privilege to work with Banny. I'm older. 
I wanted to find By out a, a few lo- days. I wanted to find out a little bit about Manny and Is it a privilege? I've been wondering. <laughs> no, no, it is because he surrounds himself with That depends on who you he speak surrounds to. himself <laughs> with really talented guys and they're not there to talk. They're there to work. They want to make their money and they want to go home and talk to their wives. They want to go home and hang out with their buddies. They're not there for socializing. Lunch is for socializing or before work. Everyone at his job sites at work by 6, 6.30, even though he's starting at 7. And you know what? At 4 o'clock when he closes it up, your day's over. Get you're, out. You've made your money. Yep. And if you pass the test, you're working with Manny. Uh, this is just an example. You know, I learned a lot from him. I When I had a partnership, I started to slack. I started, I stopped, like I started going to get coffee and tea and talking to the homeowner and just dragging out the day. And my day went from an eight hour day to a 14. So if you're going to work, make it an eight hour day. And that means even for your employees, right? Have a life, man. No, I don't need that. I'll get that later in my 30s. No, 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 have a well, life. And, and here's your my Tinder l- wife's going to appreciate that. Man. My, my last, in my 30s. <laughs> my last question for both of you is, what are you guys doing for your retirement? recently probably working no <laughs> see, this whole this whole can we say the covid can we see the of C course word? we could yeah this whole covid19 situation has actually sparked that retirement plan up again where i've pulled money out of thrown into rsps and tfsas because you know times like this income's not guaranteed so you better be prepared for it and i'm trying to get him on the same boat here i'm getting married i don't have any money well hey, you won't have any down the road 50 right now yeah <laughs> I am planning for retirement. My dad's a financial planner too, so he's kind of instilled that in me. Yeah, good for you. No, not over here. <laughs> not <laughs> I know, I looked over, I was waiting for something. <laughs> no. Nope. He's like looking at the paint nothing. on the wall yeah. over there. What's, uh, what's around here? Okay, so what did we resolve? Nothing. No. <laughs> no I, I, th- I, think, I think for the right millennials listening, they're going to get the good message here. And if they're on the right track, they'll just... Keep their mouth shut. They'll learn from the guys that you know they look up to, and that's it. If it's you want to really be simple. that, yeah. If you want to be that GC, you're gonna have to go through all these other avenues of working. Yeah, go you're through gonna the have motions. To, you're gonna have to pick up that broom and sweep. They don't understand that, man. Like the biggest thing that I ever, I, I've always seen all of my sub trades pick up a broom. Every single one. I have like one. three in my van. They always there's no, there's no there's yeah no, me too there's no issue with sweeping I don't get a, no, I don't I, sweep, that. I enjoy sweeping it's nice it's therapeutic but every millennial should back. pay attention to where you can possibly <laughs> learn and understand that knowledge comes from a bunch of different sources right it's not just about you just taking this one aspect or swinging a hammer you have to see how everybody's doing their work man. yeah that's and important in my eyes too if you're willing to sweep for three four days a week and not complain yeah you probably do fairly good on carpentry and yeah. building and stuff but you'll it, want, you'll it's want the to attitude learn. that you develop by doing the sweeping that's the thing that's yeah. that's why they put everybody on the broom first because yeah. if you can push your broom and you do a good job and you don't complain they're going to put you on other stuff if you're complaining about taking out garbage you're not going to learn you're not going to stick around even sweeping guys can really drag that out oh yeah like yeah, sweeping sure. sweeping that. shouldn't be an hour job you know what i mean huh? I, I see guys care just <laughs> how because they take you to well, how many square feet. <laughs> no, but listen, An I average see, house. I worked with, a couple, about I worked with a couple of guys. One guy's minutes. trick. One guy's trick was to wrap extension cords up. You would think he's working. He's wrapping an extension cord, but he's constantly doing this while he's talking. Another guy would work with a two by four on his shoulder and walk around and talk to people. But he looked like he was carrying lumber. Who are so, these jokers? Where do you I'm find saying, these people? That's from the YMCA music video, isn't it? I see the guy with the wood walking by. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the construction. So the moral. I think the moral of the story is: if you are a youngster out there and you're listening, the most important part is that since you're young, you have a whole life ahead of you, and the most important part is never to burn a bridge. So what you should do is no, don't bullshit. Don't burn, burn those, them. No, don't. <laughs> Not don't, all of them. Some you, of them may. I'm saying the most important part is really respect where the knowledge is, man, and absorb as much of it as possible. Even the bad but knowledge. Do, but don't, yeah. Even but the bad don't knowledge. be abusive about it. Yeah, but what I was leading to is. That's where the burning is, bridge part. But I, was, I totally understand But what I was that. leading to is if you, if you respect the people you work for and you put 100% into it, you will always have an opportunity to cross that bridge later on in your future. And you'd never know who's going to be successful and who's not, and when you're going to need someone or you're not. So by putting 150% into anyone's business that you work for or any opportunity that comes along, 
that's the most important part because people will say that guy's amazing like i constantly get work because i'm always working hard and i'll always have opportunity even like now i can that's it's endless there's so much work for me i can't stop christian you got you've been in construction for eight years you've been in construction for how long uh 18 yeah 18, 18 years yeah oh architecture welding mechanic construction but now is the first time that you know this isn't your first business no this would be the second second yeah. business yeah, right cjk was first but you you did a few years of working first before you started i initially started off in the uh, uh, to get into the trades i did my electrical apprenticeship i don't did that for like a year typical millennial i got impatient but i was working with my uncle the master electrician out in toronto working for him though that's where i actually developed all my work ethic now to think about it i'd start my days at 3 30 a.m because i didn't drive take the bus from ancaster down to the McNabb station in hamilton whoa and then from this guy's the hungry I was, yeah, then. That's that's what formed me. But I got into trouble. I was a little shit back then, we too. We all were. So it, it, it helped me. I still am. So I, I took a bus out to, or took, yeah, I took dum, a bus dum, or the dum. train out to Burlington. <laughs> and then from there, the foreman would drive me into Woodbridge. Formula know? One? No, foreman. foreman. Oh. <laughs> he, he drove like to a foreman. Woodbridge. He would drive his Jaguar, so oh, he basically man. drove Formula One. But yeah, and my days would start from 3.30. That's an hour drive. My commute in the morning is more than an hour. 3.30 a.m. No, no, I no. started work from, at 7. That's insane. <laughs> but man. I did it, and I, I was hungry, and I did that for, I think, six months. And I'd get home at like 7.30, 8 p.m. at night, sleep a little bit, go back to work. So that's the stuff that formed These me. kids have to be hungry. They have it yeah. too good. I was living at home too at the time, but my dad's like, get out. Go do something. No, I was doing uh, architecture from 8 till 5, and then going home and getting something to eat, and then going to a, a packing company at 6.30 till 2 in the morning. Wow, I like this guy. Five, he's he's five, wild. He can actually work all night. I can't. Five like, days I just a go week. Are you sure you're not Croatian? <laughs> Just, um, just crazy. <laughs> no, no, you're hungry. But it's it, great. It, it I love a, hearing it, that. It took a toll on my relation, though, for sure, 100%. It was, They'll get it used to it. And th things don't change. It's an, <laughs> <here's> a, <laughs> things are, if she's listening, however it is now, it will be like that forever. No, all right. <laughs> my she's, wife, she's swiping right right now. You know what? <laughs> this is what my wife said. She said, you know what? I knew what I married when I, when I first met you. And things just don't change. Um, there was one thing that bothered me, and I just want to talk to you quickly about that. You said there's a lot of competition. Do you yeah. really believe that? Do you really believe you have a lot of competition in business? By nature, I'm just competitive, right? So I kind of go into everything thinking there's competition to it. And I don't think it's a bad thing to you know have on your mind that everything's a competition. Because this industry is, yeah, there's a lot of money to be made. There's a lot of a lot of clients there's billions in revenue to be made here but it is a competition because when you're going into price a job you're selling yourself against somebody else that's quoting the job but so, there's a lot of work out there though there is a lot of work but, but i'm saying a lot not of good like work out there i also find too it's harder too when two younger guys walk into a job to price it that clients are gonna the be clients like, are gonna kind they're of gonna be like yeah those are the guys i want has but it been hard no though? no but it i found when i was like by myself doing stuff that it was harder that working when I was, especially when I was Do you younger. want Carlito and I to go in there for you? And then <laughs> you, we'll just, you know what? I don't, it's, it's I, hard though. Cause with all my experience and then they look at me and it's like, really? Like this guy has all that experience and it's hard for them to say, yeah, okay, do it. Go ahead. But so just start telling them that Tiger Woods started playing golf at what age and start telling yeah. them that Kobe was playing. I, I really don't think all. a lot start of homeowners really that. care about the age. No, yeah, I think they do. Lately, we haven't even had that yeah, issue because we we've been going to price problems, yeah. jobs and we know what we're talking about. We deliver the estimate, the the renderings. We show them the Instagram account. This is what we do. Well, you're ahead of everybody because well, rendering drawings are excellent. Don't, don't say well, he's ahead. <laughs> I'm just no, you guys are you guys are a team, and that's it's, it's the same it's, thing. It's not cheap though. It cost me it cost me a boatload of money to go to school to do those. <laughs> yeah, and the program per year. Oof. Yeah. Ooh, and you're going to make the money from it Licensing. now. Licensing four, four grand um, a year for that. That is one thing a, a friend of mine said. I at one point I said I really want to go back to school to educate myself, and he said, "Hey, stop." You hire people that have already spent their money and their time on education, and you manage those people to do what you want for the uh, for you. So you take their education, his engineering, and make money from it. That's true. Or make money together. I just together. saved, the, I just <laughs> saved a boatload of money. Nice. <laughs> yeah. On that note. No, 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 no. Stop. So that was Christian, <laughs> Dustin, KS Company Corp. Yep. Is that going to change? Nope. Nope. At KS Company Corp. Yep. And it's triple W K S 
and the word and a n d c o dot c a. Yep. We won't even give up. So if you're in the Hamilton area, Hamilton, Ancaster, we're, we're Stony honestly Creek, moving out towards yeah. this. Mississauga, way. We're doing Niagara, Mississauga. Mississauga. Yeah. Yep. Toronto. And, and if Toronto. you're looking for a job, just call them up. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, We're guys, thank you very for. much. I don't know how many answers we came up with. No, I don't think we really well, found any answers. A lot answer of answers, but not for the right questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I, he just dissed us. <laughs> <laughs> hey, dissed himself, too. <laughs> I'm offended. <laughs> Let's so my, <laughs> listen, this is an we'll ongoing problem. On right I think that the hungry guys just have to stay hungry, and I think the non-hungry guys just have to learn how to eat. That's all it is, man. Or don't hire the guys that aren't worth it. And uh, You know what? Bottom line is that if you're a GC or if you're another sub-trader and a millennial comes in and they have the stereotypical traits, tell them the fuck off. So I like what, that. What are the what? stereotypical traits? That though? late definitely shows first up, one. rolls up on the phone. Shows up, rolls up with a coffee. Takes a one-hour shit. Takes a one-hour shit. All that shit, whatever. <laughs> if he does all those things, then just dump the fuck off. Well, See it's like I fine. used to tell him, everyone's got to eat, just not at our table. <laughs> <laughs> I love this guy. I think Tupac said that. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> he most definitely did. <laughs> so, on that note. A boom, boom, a boom, thank you very much, Christian. Boom, thank you. Thank you very much, boom, Dustin. Boom, really thank appreciate you it. Thanks, guys, for checking out here from Hamilton and joining the show. Talking about Millennials Part 2. Part two, twice. <laughs> there might be a third one. We'll see how I can approach this one, man. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening to the show. It's growing every single week. More and more people are listening to it, and we actually have something really interesting. And we're glad that everyone's reaching out and sending us some DMs, some nice DMs, and some nice little jokes that come from our stickers and stuff like that. So I like that. Get us out of here, man. 416 TO, baby. I'll...